Hey, how's it going? Today is the day where I have to be man enough to admit that I had no idea what I was getting into today. I would say that Ditto is probably a fan favorite Pokemon, and I'd overall just agree with that. It's a cute little blob, it has a blank face, and the anime did a great job at giving it a lovable personality, despite being a failed clone. But with that said, I couldn't fathom in my wildest depths of my mind how the Ditto run was going to go. I'm not going to spoiler anything right now up front. In the intro but suffice it to say ditto far surpassed and even impressed me in ways that you might not expect i'll go through the ins and outs of ditto soon but all i'll say right now is that it was an experience and it was a test of my patience now with that said i do solo runs fairly often and if that is of interest to you and you were just new to the channel consider subscribing to keep up on the content likes and comments help out that dreaded youtube algorithm and if you are someone who just never interacts or just doesn't know what to say scroll down and just type in blob of frustration in the comments below to give me the energy to get through this one and now my friends sit back relax grab yourself a few soda pops hell you might even need some whiskey for this one and let's just dive in and watch a very special journey unfold As I prepare to get my feet wet in the world of Ditto, I need you guys to understand the mechanics and just the general way Ditto is going to work over the course of this video. First things first, like always, I grab my Ditto, I make sure it has good IVs, and I name it Help Me to foreshadow the general feeling of how it feels to physically play this run. Now let's go over the very basics. Everyone knows that Ditto has one move, and one move only, and that's Transform. It will never learn another move. It will learn no TMs, so this is it, this is as good as it's going to get. The second thing is that I copy the stats of the opponent I transform with the exception of the HP stat. I still use my own, thankfully. The tutorial battle isn't bad, but the key thing to keep in mind for the entire run is that outside of having more health so that I can absorb more damage, Ditto is essentially never going to get stronger and will always be the same as what you are facing. It sounds interesting, but the novelty will wear off pretty quickly, but let's just move on a little bit. And I want to take this little first part of the game pre-brock to kind of serve as a full explanation and give examples of how things are exactly gonna go and let's just take a look at the first bug catcher to go into a little bit more detail he leads with a weedle and I transform now here's the interesting part and I'm being nice because it's honestly the bad part of becoming another Pokemon and that's the the fact that you copy their moves except you only have five power points to use for these moves in the case of the bug catcher with the measly level 6 weedle I only have five uses of both Poison Sting and String Shot and of course this means that I have Weedle stats and only five Poison Stings to use and since the computer doesn't use PP in Generation 1 I lose this fight fairly convincing and this is our first red flag of the run. This means more grinding and what makes this part really awful is that the only reliable wild Pokemon I can get past right now is Weedle. Specifically the level 3 Weedle because anything more means that you will not be able to get it down with the Poison and stings that you have and you won't be able to make it through the fight comfortably. And just for reference, here's a level 4 Weedle. While I can win this fight eventually, the 5 poison stings just aren't enough and then I have to exhaust all of the string shots as well and finish it off with struggle. Needless to say, doing it this way takes a good bit longer. And during this time, even thinking about fighting a Kakuna or Metapod is just asking to waste over 5 minutes in a fight where you might not even win. And it's pretty sad because this is generally the best experience you can get to prepare for Brock, but it's just off the table for this run pretty much. The much more efficient way to get through Pokemon is just to get rid of your transform PP and just to use struggle, but of course this can only be so efficient due to the finite amount of potions that you can get at this stage in the game. Eventually I do go to the one mandatory bug catcher with a single Weedle, and honestly it's not too bad, but you can see just how low I get between the recoil damage and then getting chipped with poison sting. It's not ideal, but we are making progress so that's good. I go ahead and buy a few Pokeballs for my HM Pokemon in the future and I spend everything else on every potion that I can afford so I can just struggle and I can make it more efficient and after grinding a slight bit I attempt to pick up some of the optional trainers here's the first bug catcher again and I'm attempting it with struggle this will be 
a big theme of the run to where I just try to brute force my way through a lot of battles, but you'll quickly learn that any trainer that has at least three Pokemon, it can be incredibly difficult and trainers that have four or more are pretty much impossible to get through without feigning because of the recoil damage just starts to add up way too much. I failed this one a lot and I eventually give up and for some reason then I try to go see how the optional rival fight's gonna go. I try several times with struggle strats and it's just miserable. I almost get it down but I have to give up on this one as well. I try once again but this time I'm trying to transform into his Pidgey and it goes bad the first couple of times but let's talk about some more ditto quirks. When you use transform you give your opponent a free move that's often overlooked because it's just bad. In this case if it decides just to go for a sand attack it makes this fight very hard way harder than it should be and the second thing I'd like to quickly go in more depth about is when you transform you take their stats as they are and it doesn't take into account any stat experience that you might have. This means Means that even after giving them a free turn from then on out it's pretty much always a 50 50 on which one of you is going to go first it's very it, it's just not good i actually do get this one down on the third attempt and i'll break it down for you guys the pidgey misses its opening sand attack i do one of my own and from there i toss a little bit more sand it misses pretty much every turn and i'm able to gust it down and be at full health this means i have three sand attacks left for the squirtle as well as a single gust before i even get to struggle strats and i'm just healthy enough to get through it and this is going to be your typical ditto transform battle where even what is typically a pretty trivial fight if you have levels it just takes the dominoes falling into your favor for you to actually get by. Now from there time is starting to tick up and tick up but I'm finally able to struggle my way up to level 11 and I'm finally able to get through the rest of the bug catchers. This specific one takes me a ton of tries to get through and like I just said a lucky attempt where I barely hang on with a single point of HP is how I eventually end up getting through this one. After exhausting all of my potions and efficiently using struggle strats for as long as I possibly can, I'm able to implement a strategy from our last video and that's the wide out on the junior trainer strategy. At level 12, I'm able to consistently defeat the Diglett for 190 experience but the Sandshrew can easily defeat me and this puts me in a way more efficient experience loop if I just take the wide out and it's infinitely faster than grinding in Viridian Forest and even more so now considering that I'm out of potions and I can't continuously just use struggle anymore. I then give Brock a try at level 13 and I don't have high expectations here. The idea is to transform into the Geodude, use defense curl five times, and then just struggle my way to victory. I guess that's what I was going for. What ends up happening is the biggest slog of a battle I've ever seen in my entire life where our tackles do one damage to each other and then when I get to struggle strats, I'm taking an extra point per turn and it just goes on for what feels like two hours until I faint and I would need just an enormous amount of HP for something like this to work so back to grinding I go we don't have any choice and I battled this junior trainer a ton of times it still works great at level 17 but something kind of bad happens at level 18 at this level you can often knock out the century and win the fight but we don't want that this turns something that felt very easy and turned it into something that's very tedious what I end up having to do is go down to Viridian grind just a little bit take some chip damage and then I can return to the junior trainer and it puts me in a position where I can still take out the Diglett, but still might not be able to win the fight and that's what we want. It's looking like I'll still need some levels and this is still way faster than going about the normal way in my opinion. It's a pretty good strategy. I'm still weaving in fights with Brock and at this point this run is already not looking great but I probably did not need to tell you that. I can make it through the Geodude now and I can even get the Onyx to roughly about half health consistently but with Bide and me not having any way to avoid it I couldn't even guess how much more HP I would need to make this one a comfortable let alone just get past it in general. I tried this one over and over and over and over and when things are getting desperate at level 23 I just thought to myself why haven't I just tried this as a ditto and just use struggle that way since I have better stats since I'm pretty much double the level of the Geodude and I have stat experience. And this turns out to be a pretty surprising one shot victory. There's not much to really say here as far as strategy goes because I just use struggle and I'm praying that I survive and in this case I live at a nice and healthy 8 HP and the opening nightmare is over for ditto finally and I don't know about you guys but it feels like the intro part of this went on a little bit long and there's a pretty good reason so guys here's my save time soak it in here I'm at four hours and 11 minutes after Brock and I've done several runs that have already beaten the entire game by the time ditto even managed to get past Brock 
this isn't great and I would like you to take your bets now on what the final time is going to be. I really wanted to be thorough about how Ditto works and how things are just a struggle literally and metaphorically during the first part so I can just be more streamlined moving forward so we can avoid a three hour video and I don't have to go play in traffic to avoid my never ending nightmare. But before we start picking up the pace, I want you guys to really understand something about Ditto. So you know runs like Sida, Growlithe, Sandshrew, those runs that really struggled on Brock? Well things significantly got easier because of just the sheer level required to finally get past Brock with only normal moves. From that point, even things like Pound are pretty sufficient to get past everything, just steamroll everything because of that huge level advantage. I bring this up because things never get easier as Ditto and I need you to always remember that while you're watching this. Even normal trainer battles will never be guaranteed for the entire run and even if I was at level 60, transform always brings you down to the level of your competition. Struggle is always an option but remember it's dicey if your opponent even has three Pokemon. Pretty much impossible if they have four or more and I've already mentioned that but these are just some things that you need to think about moving forward as you're watching. From there I battle everything that moves and I slog through every single trainer before I finally arrive in Cerulean. I immediately challenge rival number two and he has four Pokemon so struggle is not viable here. All of the extra battles got me up to level 26 and I'm hoping that I have enough HP just to make this one at least alright. I turn into Pidgeotto, I take a quick attack, I set up a sand attack and I hope I don't take any return. I do take one but that's it. I'm able to get it down from there and it just I just kind of dominate the fight. I have sand attacks left over at the end with enough damaging moves to not even have to use struggle at all and overall this one feels pretty good considering what we just went through but don't get used to that. And before I do Nugget Bridge I decide let's just go ahead and take on Misty. I try some attempts with transform and it's really not great. The stars have decently high crit rate in general and the only real positive is that her good AI won't let Starmie use its powerful moves like bubble beam but I just get outpaced either way and I can't do it after many times and the solution here like it's always going to be is to use Ditto's only other strategy and that's everyone's favorite struggle strats. I still fail several times because dealing with her moves on top of having a decent chunk of recoil damage coming back in it's just hard to overcome. And in true Ditto fashion, I eventually get past, surviving the final struggling blow with a mere 2 HP before getting the victory, and ultimately the second badge. Now please, let's just skip past the Nugget Bridge. Let's go down to the SSN now. And I've painstakingly done every trainer available. I'm level 34 going into rival number 2, and at this point, I'm attempting struggle strats like always. And I've said this a lot, hindsight's 2020, and when I'm playing, the map playing this run and the map talking now are two different people, I hadn't quite grasped the fundamentals of Ditto, and I ignore the rule of not being able to go straight struggle on a trainer with 4 Pokemon, and I promptly lose. This means I have to utilize Transform, and all these levels I have are just for health. So let's just hope I have enough of it, right? I'm fairly high for this stage in the game. Game, but a single sand attack provides just enough annoyance that I just can't make it through the fight on my first attempt. And from there I just fail several more times because I'm ditto and nothing is ever easy and making it to the war turtle isn't even guaranteed. The Kadabra or even the Raticate could just potentially do a ton of damage. And this is just par for the course, I'm not even mad. Eventually on the fifth or so attempt I'm able just to wipe out the Pidgeotto with a crit and that just gives me that extra bit of health and the avoidance of sand attack to finally make my way through the fight. There's not much more to say about it than that, so let's just look ahead at Surge. At first glance, turning into the Voltorb doesn't look great until you realize that I'm going to resist all the Pokemon moves, I can't be paralyzed, and Voltorb has a normally bad move pool just consisting of normal moves but it kind of shines here. In this specific case, I use Screech to lower the first two Pokemon's defenses and that way Tackle will do heavy damage as a result of that, and saving that flat 20 HP Sonic Boom for Raichu means that I just easily take this on my first attempt and in a run like this I need battles like this for my sanity so I'm very happy with the result. And I'm going to show a few random trainer battles. I want to really only cover the main battles. I don't want this video to be too long but I just can't ignore the particularly painful ones that are generally insignificant in any other run. Take this last here for instance. It's kind of a fringe case and it's not like most trainers. She has four Pokemon but using transform turns this into one of the most grating, time-consuming, over 
overall tedious experiences when you transform into her Oddish. Just look at this battle and realize that it's sped up by like times 8 speed and it just ends in a double KO just to make it even worse because if I faint, I lose because I have to reset because I'm only using Ditto, right? It sucks. I end up having to exhaust Transform's PP and just using that classic struggle strat to get through this one, but let's just move along. You can guess how that battle is going to look and here's a hint, struggle every single turn. I barely survive. I lose IQ. Now let's quickly watch a few more Rock Tunnel battles. I promise I'm not going to show much more than this, but the very first one inside of Rock Tunnel is the Cubone and Slowpoke. It's just an absolute nightmare. And keep in mind in this first little footage you're seeing here, I get a miraculous lucky crit that wipes out the enemy Cubone pretty much instantly. And this one takes me quite a while to get past, even despite that. And I end up having to go back, exhaust my uh, transform PP and using struggle as well. Finally, let's take a look at the infamous hiker with the two Geodudes and the Graveler. I fully expected this one to be a absolute nightmare and I'm still on struggle strat since I had to do that one to get through the Q-Bone battle and it's just not happening. They all resist struggle's normal type damage and I just don't have enough HP to make this one work. I go back in and this time we're using the transform strategy and I'm immediately worried here. You see Geodude has four moves but one of them is self-destruct. This means I have to win this battle in 15 moves and one of those moves are defense curl. Now defense curl will trigger the badge boost but both tackle and rock throw are resisted on top of rock throw just being a dog shit move. I'm on a soft timer here because self destruct is an instant loss but miraculously I do get lucky all of his pokemon use self destruct and since I resist it anyway and have defense curls I can very easily tank all of them. I consider myself pretty lucky in this fight to do it in just two tries because I thought this one had the potential to wall the entire playthrough and, and require me to grind an enormous amount. But before I skip ahead to Celadon, you might notice I don't have the bike. Yes guys, I'm so flustered by this run, I forgot to pick up the bike. In Celadon, we're just we're picking up way later after I've already fought all of the trainers on the route west of Lavender, all of Erica's underling trainers, and all of the rocket hideout minions. Now these aren't tough battles by any stretch of the imagination, but since we're ditto, there were tons of resets, tons of struggling, and constant healing at the Poke Center involved because that's just how it goes. But I'm doing us all a favor here, and I'm just going to cut it all out and we know how ditto battles are just going to go so I'm saving everybody the time. All of that miserable grinding has gotten us to a level of 46 and I'm naive thinking that it's going to help us out as the game gets tougher and tougher but are you guys ready to visualize how rough this run has been up to this point? Just get ready, prepare yourself. Guys we are at 8 hours and 46 minutes before the 4th gym. We are already approaching Zubat and Cubone levels of time and we aren't even halfway through the game. I'd like you just to pause the video, kind of sit back, and just contemplate all of this information if you need any more proof how much of a slog this run has been. It turned into the initial thoughts of saying, hey, this looks like an interesting run. I love Ditto, to, whoa, this is turning out to be as bad as a Weedle run would be, and it's getting there at a rapid pace. And you can only just kind of sit back and go, wow, when you think about it. But I digress. Let's uh, just dive into Erica real quick, right? I'm on struggle strats here still. I stay on struggle strats. My life is struggle strats at this point. Victory Bell is still a menace and it does chip me down consistently. I die several times, but we don't need to see every single bit of those. But eventually I do give up and I head over to the rocket hideout first. We'll come back here later. Like I previously mentioned, I've cleared out the hideout so it's literally straight to Giovanni and this spot was a learning experience. I initially thought that this one was going to be completely awful, but I learned something here that kind of helps me out later in the game, but we'll get to that when it gets here. Rage is generally a god awful move. You use it, you you get locked into it and the damage is low and it's just bad. In this situation, I use Screech on the opposing Onyx and then I just start to rage. Each time you get hit, you get a little attack boost that triggers the badge boost and we never have to use another move. We get this hilarious rage battle where the game just kind of plays itself after that and I'm able just to pretty much be on cruise control as this fight plays out. It's a very long battle, but I cannot possibly complain about a one-shot victory where I didn't even have to tap A this time. Now let's bounce it back to Erica. This time I do use Trans form and being part grass typing as her victory bell is great. This means it's pretty much a free battle with how the AI is going to work and overall it's just really smooth. I should have recognized this on my first attempts but my brain is just so fried at this point that being over nine hours at not even halfway through the game I just I couldn't even think clearly anymore. At least we are making some pretty swift progress. Positivity guys it goes a long way. Speaking of positivity let's pick up at Pokemon Tower and this is a low point in a run that's all low points. Even in the Zubat video that wasn't great, I confidently said that rival number 4 
for was every run's confident boost, but wouldn't you just know it here that Ditto is going to struggle? And I don't mean use the move struggle. If the Pidgeotto isn't annoying, the Execute will step in to fill that role. I always get chipped down one way or the other, and I never have enough HP to finish off the fight. I fell on this one three times, and that's honestly an amazing accomplishment. This is an infamous fight for being laughable in terms of difficulty, and it just really says a lot about the state of the run when it's a hassle to get through this specific fight. Eventually though, I do get through on my fourth attempt. There's nothing new here. Things just sort of kind of fall the way they need to, and I'm able to be healthy enough at the end of the fight so I can use struggle for the victory on the war turtle. The name of my ditto is not a joke. I need someone to help me. Please, someone reach out and help me. I'm not even going to talk about how awful the Zubat and Golbat rocket members are at the end of the tower, but just know that I had to take a long extended break, but let's go towards Fuchsia. Finally, I get to show off the bike glitch where you can just kind of keep holding left and the guard that just won't let you in without a bike, he just kind of gives up and the game just kind of gives you the bike for this section. This right here is peak generation one, no complaints here. But before we get into more frustration, let me be thorough and cover a bug that's specific to Ditto that happens during this section. It happened to me, I had to reset, I lost a ton of progress, then I had to do some research. This led me to a four year old Ditto run by Pika Spray and some Bulbapedia research to pinpoint exactly what it was, but let's just get into it. So if you fight a Pokemon with Mirror Move, and in the case of this run, the section before Fuchsia on Route 18, they do contain lots of Spearow and Pharaoh, when you transform into them and all ultimately use mirror move, gen 1 coding strikes again. To put it simple, the game stores an invisible and inaccessible move when you revert back to the base state of ditto, and it's not a problem yet, but when you deplete your uses of transform and go for struggle strats in a trainer battle, you get a hard lock situation of the game and you're just stuck. What ends up happening is since you use mirror move and have this invisible move, the game doesn't let you use struggle. Instead, you can just access the menu, but the game tells you there's not enough PP to use this move despite transform being your only move. Obviously you can't run from trainer battles so you were just locked into this battle until you reset since we can't switch we're only using ditto in this run. It's an interesting bug and I'm just kind of glad I'm not the first to discover it but it's it's annoying but honestly what isn't annoying in this run. From there I go on an absolute tear. I'm not going to show any of this but I battle trainers I didn't even know existed. I'm battling everything. I retrack. I battle every non-spiro non-firo battle on the cycling road. I go to the east of Fuchsia. I'm just battling everything that moves. I even go ahead and take on the fake fighting gym and ultimately every other optional trainer inside of Sylph as well. The next stretch and pretty much the rest of the game, they're just not going to be fun. Let's just, let's say that. All of this ultimately gets me to level 65 and I'm hoping that this extra HP starts to pay some dividends. But let's take a look at Koga and I can only describe this battle as one of the worst in the entire game and I guess I'm going to just say that about every battle moving forward. I tried struggle strats and it's just miserable for now, but the real problem is that you have to turn into coughing and this thing, it's not a stat monster. No one thought that I guess, but it's significantly weaker than the muck and the wheezing. The move pool is also really bad. Tackle and smoke screen are about the only things you can actually use because the other moves are going to be resisted, but the real headache of this fight comes from the fact that the first coughing is going to use smoke screen on you then the muck's going to come in, it's going to use minimize and this is going to be one of the longest and most painful experiences that you could ever imagine going through in a Pokemon game. Even if you do end up making it to the Weezing, you're just you're on struggle strats and you will never ever in your entire life have enough to power through the smoke screens, take the recoil damage required to kill a full health Weezing, and survive that inevitable self-destruct. I tried this one a ton of times before realizing I just I have to give up and there's only one place I can turn to without grinding wild Pokemon and that's rival number five. And to no one's surprise, I failed this fight about a million times as well, but I'll just talk about the many pitfalls in the spot. The first is that you have to transform into Pidgeot and it has Whirlwind which is just a, a wasted move and it only has two damaging moves. On top of that enemy Pidgeot has Sand Attack and I don't need to talk about how that just makes things infuriating. The second thing is Execute. It can paralyze you. It can put you to sleep and worst of all it can set up Reflect. Then there's Alakazam which can recover damage to waste your very limited PP on top of just having a lot of power to just kill you by itself. And the Blastoise is annoying but just making it there in good health 
health is the big challenge. I tried this battle for what felt like, I don't know, it had to be at least like 60 times. And ultimately, let's take a look at Ditto getting everything to fall into its favor to get past this one. Opening up on the Pidgeot, the perfect ideal move would be you transform and it uses Whirlwind, but it doesn't do that here. Wing attack is alright, but you probably cannot take a sand attack. I do use a sand attack of my own and I get a very nice crit, which I don't think was needed, but it's enough to take it out shortly after. So far, so good. Now it's time for Galloth. It has potential to do some damage, but this is your only time to get rid of your useless Whirlwind PP and hopefully get it to use Leer a few times for some badge boost in a perfect world, but it can also waste its turn on War, so that's nice too. Even Ember is fine, but the main thing is you have to dump your excess PP here. I'm at about half health going forward, and I honestly didn't think that this would be the battle that I get past. Execute comes in, and I hate this goddamn egg, but I get another crit on a wing attack and I take it down before it can do anything, and that's exactly what you want to see, but things are not in the clear yet. Now it's time for Alkazam. The strategy going in was that I need to use a wing attack, and then I can use a quick attack directly after just to take it out, but miraculously, I just get another crit wing attack here, and I just take the fight in one turn. Now Pidgeot has a respectable crit rate of slightly less than 18%, but I'm getting some pretty crazy luck here, I'm not going to complain about it though. Now for the Blastoise, I have plenty of PP left since Ditto wanted to be crit happy, and I have several sand attacks to ensure that it will miss, and I ultimately am able just to take the fight. It was pretty bad, I'm not, I didn't show all the failures, but it, was, it wasn't great. I got extremely lucky with crits, but the way I see it, if you're going to do a fight dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times, eventually you are going to see the things that need to go right happen, and that's why I'm not going to get stuck on it for too long. Getting Lapras here for Surf, we could just fish for something else, but go ahead and get this Lapras is also pretty big. Next up, let's take a look at Giovanni number two, and this is yet another battle in the plethora of Ditto's run that feels pretty much impossible to do, even at level 65. We all know by now, Ditto has two tools in its box, and first up, I'll touch on the struggle strats. The golden rule of Ditto is four more Pokemon, you just don't have enough HP, and that's the case here. This one, I felt might have been possible, but Pokemon that resist normal type moves like struggle really just throw a wrench into the strategy, and when you make it to that Rhyhorn, you just have to get through so much recoil damage that you really don't stand a chance, and the only other way to do things is the good old fashioned transform strategy, and it's just god awful in this fight. First of all, you have to turn into Nidorino, and it's not necessarily a great Pokemon in its own right, even if you were just looking at it in a vacuum, but it has focus energy, a broken move that lowers crit rate rather than raises it, it has fury attack, which is a, a barrage clone, and you know how I feel about barrage, it's absolutely awful, it has poison sting, a whopping 15 base power move that's incredibly weak, and it has horn attack, and that just says a lot when your best move is a non-stab 60 base power normal move. Keep in mind that three of the four Pokemon will resist Poison Sting, and then Rhyhorn's just going to resist everything you have, and you just quickly run into problems, and honestly, these attempts with Nidorino were worse than struggle strats. Needless to say, I also tried this fight dozens of times uh, to maybe see if there's some hidden win condition, but there's no amount of crits that will get me through this one. Once again, I'm forced to give up, and we're just going to go see what else we can struggle on. From there, I go ahead and I pick up the remaining HMs in the Safari Zone, as well as every item I can carry to sell to fuel my hyper potion addiction so I can struggle deep into the night like a crack addict in the back alley. And now we are all the way back to Koga and I fail once again and I quickly cower away in fear. This sets me off on a journey to find any and every trainer that I might have missed in my journey and it takes me to the route south of Lavender that no one has ever visited. There are several trainers around here and honestly I just feel dirty for even having to resort to this. And it turns out not to be enough and I do the truly most desperate thing that I could possibly do. I deposit all of my Pokemon minus Ditto in the PC. I return to Giovanni number two for the sole purposes of getting as far as I can, taking the decent experience, and then widening out so I can maybe progress with some extra levels so I don't have to grind wild Pokemon. I'm not proud of this, but, but what do you want me to do? Give up and just end the video now? We got to embrace the torture on this channel, and it's made even worse because a lot of attempts, I just, I can't even make it past the Kangaskhan with Nidorino. It's really bad. I grind for what feels like three weeks. I bounce back and forth between Koga and Giovanni number two to see which one was possible. And guys, finally, at level 75, I hit an important breakpoint that makes Koga possible for me to do. Level 75 turns out is what you need to be able to one hit the coughings before they could do anything like maybe throw a smoke screen and that helped out a lot. I avoid most of the damage and when I get on the wheezing, struggle roughly does about half health. From there, it gets an X attack and that gives me a chance to get the second struggle to finish the fight and I still only survive with 19 HP, but finally, 
there's some progress. In the video, it hasn't seemed like it's been that long for these last few fights, but it's been so many hours of real life time. Guys, I'm level 75 on Koga. That says everything, right? Giovanni is still a bit too tough to get through, but being positive despite being in the shittiest run possible means that we can finally use Surf outside of battle, and that gives us the opportunity to go on tour of some of the areas that we never really get to see in our other runs. And welcome to the power plant, everyone. Place we'll never see again, but as far as experience goes, it's not too bad. There are lots of level 40 Voltorbs, there's some level 43 Electrodes, and there's even a rare candy that no one has ever taken the time to go get, but that'll help us out. But I can take this opportunity to take out my frustration on Zapdos, and Dropek honestly hits really hard. Zapdos would be an interesting Pokemon for a how fast run, but in this situation, it needs to die to fuel Ditto's dreams. Now it's time for a brisk swim down to Cinnabar. I battle everything in the Pokemon Mansion and inside Blaine's gym, and that leads us to a Ditto edition of Tombstoner, brother. But if Ditto could only learn Tombstoner, maybe we wouldn't have to be this high of a level and would already have beaten the game. But let's talk about Blaine. I obviously fell several times, but for the sake of brevity, let's just do everyone a favor and talk about what actually works. This is a perfect battle for Transform since Growlithe has agility and the speed and the badge boost that comes with it really help out. And what needs to happen here is that you need to get your three agilities off and not take a takedown from the enemy Growlithe. It using Leer to further your boost would be ideal, but it's possible without that. Using a single Leer to amplify your takedown damage is what I did here, and it works great and we barely lose any health. Quantita is next, and it's nothing compared to the Growlithe. A Leer into a takedown is all that you need, and it even gives us a Tail Whip to further our boost, so let's move on. Rapidash comes in, and you guessed it, Leer into takedown is enough to one-shot it, and that takes us to the end of the fight. Now here's the reason I had to retry several times. It's because the Arcanine is really tanky, and if you have taken any Leers or Tail Whips along the way, you're pretty much in huge danger from just getting beat down in one hit by a takedown. Leer into takedown is still the strategy, but it's not enough on its own since Arcanine's a beefy boy, but it does miss its attack, and in the successful attempt, that's the only window of opportunity I needed to finish it off, get another badge, and we are progressing once again. And from there, Surf has opened up a couple of routes full of trainers, and I'm going to do every single last one of them for some easy experience and pump our level up as far as possible to prepare for those final moments of the game. But look at this fisherman. He, he It's a joke, right? He has a whopping six Magikarps, but please tell me that Ditto's not going to die on this fight. You know what? Just cut, cut the footage. Spare everybody. Just And just like the power plant, let's look at something else. It's the Sea Foam Caverns. It's like a mini Victory Road, except way more empty and a lot shorter. It has the mechanic of blocking the current with the boulders, and it's an interesting concept, but the real reason we are here is just to take out the Articuno. Ditto needs to be fed all the legendaries to complete this run, and Articuno's sacrifice will not be in vain. After beating every trainer in the entire game up to that point, it's time for more Giovanni number 2 attempts, and while it is better, it's literally still a struggle. I refuse to try this one as a new arena, since that's how I grinded earlier, but it is a little better. Let's just talk about it. I actually get through this one on the third attempt since I came back, and guys, there's no strategy here. I'm just struggling, and I'm praying. I'm able to get an attempt where I'm at decent enough health to where I can struggle on the Noodle Queen, survive, it gets a guard spec, and then I finish it off, and I survive with just 11 HP. And it says a lot about a Pokemon when this fight took the overall effort that it did, but I'm glad that we don't have to fight a stronger version of Giovanni later. That'd be insane, right? And there's only one place to go from here, and that's Sabrina. Physically frail Pokemon and a Ditto that's desperate is a pretty good combination. I struggle all over her, and this one not only is a one-shot, but it's also very easy, and that fills me with some much-needed confidence looking ahead. But guys, I have some information for you. You might not be ready for this. It's the fact that the Giovanni Gym Leader fight might just be the hardest fight in the entire game. Let's just kind of dive in, but if you think we struggled before, this fight is a different level. I'll try to articulate the things that make this fight basically impossible, but I do try struggle strats, but I've touched on how Pokemon that resist struggle make fights way more tough than they need to be, and he has two of them here. It's hard to even make it halfway through this fight with struggle strats, and you're pretty much forced to transform into the Rhyhorn for the most part. Stomp, Tail Whip, Fury Attack, and Horn Drill, it's just not the best move set, but there are some things that you can hope for. Horn Drill can work 30% of the time on the enemy Rhyhorn, but after that it's pretty much useless. The Doug Trio almost always goes for a turn one dig, and that's just a real big chunk of damage. On top of that, you also can't reliably one-shot it, which means that it probably will take two, and if it goes for another dig, it's just 
basically over. You're already below half health at that point. The opening right horn strategy can be used against you with horn drill, and Giovanni feels like he has about an 80% accuracy with any of his one hit KO moves, which he has multiple of. There's also further annoying things deeper into the fight, like body slam paralysis on the Nidal Queen, or maybe Nidal King getting a thrash crit, or just something like that. They all It all just racks up. There are tons of things in this fight that can and often do go wrong in this fight, and I bang my head on the wall a lot in this fight. I eventually start taking the wideouts to level up, and the silver lining here is that I have 11 rare candies since I went to the power plant earlier, and that means I'm not that far away from just maxing out our level. It's crazy to think about being max level before you even reach it, the Elite Four, but here we are. I try, and I try, and I'm keeping the experience. I'm widing out, and eventually I get to level 89. From there, I can just use 11 of our rare candies to take us to that majestical level 100 where all of our problems will magically be solved and the rest of the game will be over in a few minutes. And I wish I could say that. I wish I could say that it made the fight easy, but it's still a very difficult fight. And by difficult, I mean it took about a hundred tries. And this fight all comes down to pure luck. There's no way around it. There's no strategies. You need some things to go your way multiple times during the fight just to even have a chance to get past this one. And let's just kind of skip ahead hours and look at the successful attempt and go through the multitude of things that need to happen that ultimately just make this fight god awful. First up is Rhyhorn. I use Transform and there's only one goal here. Get your Horn Jill to work and get a one hit knockout to move forward without taking any damage in return. In this case, it does get a guard spec and it uses the Tail Whip on us to give me a small badge boost and I got the Horn Jill to connect on the second time and this fight isn't too bad. Uh, let's look ahead. Next up is the Doug Trio. Like I said earlier, Dig does massive damage and the best possible result and perhaps what took the longest in this fight was getting Giovanni to use a turn one guard spec rather than dig and that's what happens here at level 100 stop is enough to take it out and it makes me rethink if stat experience is added to uh, ditto next up is the nidal queen there's several things that can make this fight near impossible like a body slam paralysis or getting unlucky and getting poisoned if you take any tail whips or leers along the way the damage can also get pretty huge as well the goal here is to get a tail whip off before giovanni uses a guard spec and once you use a few fury attacks Maybe you get lucky on getting it to hit four or five times. You can get this one down without any status conditions, and that's what happens here. Next up is Nidal King, and this is probably the weak link of the fight. Like with Queen, Tail Whips before Guard Spec into some Fury Attacks and a Stomp. That's enough to easily get past this one. This was, like I said, this is the easiest part of the fight. Now it's time for the Raid Boss, and this is probably the reason for about 95% of my 100 failures on this fight. This is where Jesus just kind of takes the wheel, and you just keep trying over and over until you get the necessary luck. You want to make it here with at least three tail whips, and this wasn't the perfect attempt because a guard spec does come in before I get the third one off, but that's fine. From there, I have to get rid of some horn drill PP, which can't hit right on because it's faster than me, and then I use my last three stomps before finishing off the fight with struggle. And what makes this one nearly impossible to get through is the fact that it seems that Rhydon's just going to spam Fisher over and over, and you need it to miss like seven times in a row, and it's got a it's got a seventy percent chance to miss. You would think it wouldn't be too bad but I got hit with a turn one fish here so many times it was honestly unreal and the fact that this spot was so difficult in a run where I've done this for like the past year it honestly flabbergasted me guys I had to get to level 100 to beat Giovanni and it still took me dozens upon dozens upon dozens of times to get through this one and it was only because of pure luck it doesn't feel great I beat this fight just because of trying until I got the luck needed it didn't it didn't feel like the spirit of the run but I digress. Now I'm five fights away and the final gym fight was just so grating that I honestly contemplated just stopping the run but at this point I have a morbid curiosity to know how this one ends so let's take a look at rival number six. I transform into the familiar Pidgeot and from there you just use agility for the speed and the badge boost. I, get, I do get a wing attack crit here but I don't think that was necessary and it didn't really change a whole lot. Now it's time for the Rhyhorn and I hate this thing with a passion because it just resists everything I have. I dump all of my useless whirlwind power points and I take several tail whips to further my badge boost and I slowly just chip away at it with quick attacks and wing attacks but I do get it down but I'm about half health when this is all said and done. Growlithe is next and I know it's not that great so this is the point that you have to get rid of your remaining agility power points to kind of set yourself up for the tough sections of the fight. I do take a little bit of damage but I'm able to easily take it out afterwards. Now it's time for everyone's favorite egg. I'm very boosted and I'm pleased to announce that a super effective wing attack can just end its potential 
pathetic life in one hit, and I like that. Alakazam is next, and since we have three agilities and multiple tail whips to boost us, a single quick attack is enough to get past this weird humanoid cat creature, thank god. Now it's time for Blastoise, and at this point I'm thinking, am I really just gonna one-shot rival number six after everything I went through? And the answer is yes. Yes, we are. I get through this normally really tough fight in one shot, but I have to do Giovanni a hundred times. We are just, we're living in a bizarro world in this run, guys. It feels, I don't know how to feel. But guys, we have the Elite Four left, and it was really painful. I'm just going to say that. Forgive me if I don't want to show failure after failure after failure and have an hour-long video, because I'd much rather talk about what can go wrong and ultimately what needed to go right to get past it. And this was a near spiritual experience for me, and the amount of time that this took was essentially an out-of-body experience. I started thinking about life and contemplating what everything actually means, but does that sound fun to you guys? If so, let's just hop into Lorelai. But first, can I just ask who the fuck designed the placement of these statues? This really pisses me off and I think about it a lot. Now it's time for Lorelai, and all I can really say about this fight is that it's annoying. Struggle is just completely off the table since Growl and Aurora Beam's attack drop are a thing, so I'm not even going to attempt it. You have to transform into Dugong, and Aurora Beam is next to useless, and it's just resisted by her whole team. Growl is basically just a wasted slot. You have Takedown, which is like Struggle's little brother. It's not bad. And then you have Rest, which can be nice, but self-inflicted sleep and no damage means that you're really limited here. And I want you guys just to watch this first attempt. Uh, I take some Growls, and look at how long this battle goes on before I actually give up and do a forced reset before I even make it to the third Pokemon. At this point, I'm so debuffed, and I just know that I'll be here for at least five more minutes while I slowly kill myself and knowing that I can't win, so I, got, I gotta reset. And I'm not gonna show all the attempts, but I want you guys to know that this one is a close second to the Giovanni Gym Leader fight in terms of being awful. I don't think this one takes quite as many tries, but it's not that far off, and it's another fight where you have to keep replaying it over and over and over until you get near perfect luck, which generally means getting some some key critical hits because otherwise this fight pretty much felt impossible just like that other one. And you're watching my second attempt here in the background and I do make it to the very end but after I take some debuffs and then I'm on struggle strats for a while that means that despite being level 100 I don't quite have enough juice to make it through the entire fight but let's kind of skip ahead about 80 tries later and focus on how perfect of a fight that I actually needed to get past this one because we just kind of need to get things moving here. On the dugong it's just not too complicated. You have to not get growled when you first transform and then you have to crit on the takedown. Dugong has a crit rate of a little less than 14% so this isn't that reliable but it's not too bad because it's the first Pokemon you can just keep resetting. This leads us to the next part and perhaps this is where the most luck was required to get through here and that's a second crit back to back from the first one and you can slowly start to see why this one would take so many tries. We get the crit here we're moving on. Now things start to go a little bit south and not as picture perfect as the first two Pokemon. The Slowbo is just a complete slog and while I'm not in any danger of being knocked out or anything like that, I do take Growls and that just completely gimps my damage but I keep trucking along and eventually I take it out while I dump some of my less desirable PP in the process. On the Jinx, this one's completely awful. I'm running low on power points and I'm debuffed from Growl. It doesn't feel great. This means I have to spend a lot of turns just using Growl growl and I'm just waiting around and while I do get chipped down and it's looking like it'll be a for sure reset you have to remember that I still have rest but the problem here is that it's all I have left and that means that this fight goes on for about 35 extra turns and this part of the fight lasts longer than the rest of it all combined but at the end of the day I start to use struggle and then I get through to the Lapras and things are just not looking great here I'm getting body slammed my HP is dwindling down I'm paralyzed things are looking grim but I get another crit and that allows me to barely survive this fight. I'm battered and I'm bruised, but I did it. From here, I make an executive decision. This is the most god awful run and I absolutely refuse to follow my traditional rules. I'm saving after Lorelai because I'm not doing another 80 tries and if you disagree, let me know so I can just ignore you and your little stupid fuck opinion. Now let's talk about Bruno and remember what felt like 100 years ago when I did Giovanni number one? I did the rage strategy and it worked quite well and that's what we do here. Despite this run being the most god awful Pokemon experience, one thing will always ring true and that's the fact that Bruno is eternally pathetic. Using Rage as a strategy
strategy is extremely slow and I'm basically just watching this battle automatically unfold on Rage Autopilot and things are looking pretty good. It's a little slow and there's just absolutely nothing that can go wrong. But then the Machamp Waltz is in. It hits a massive submission critical hit and takes me all the way down to a single point of HP. Things are just all but done. Um, it, well, it would be unless Bruno just decides to use Leer back to back and that just allows me to just steal this one. And it wasn't even close guys, I wasn't even worried at all. Bruno could never beat me. Third up is Agatha and you might be surprised that this fight isn't bad at all. She has a great opener in Gengar and Transform really shines here. I don't one shot this one but I do get through in a few attempts. When I do make it through it's only by a slim margin. You basically can't afford to miss any hypnosis attempts because Struggle can't hit any of the ghost types and you don't want it to come to that because you'll have to reset. Nightshade doing 100 damage is great and Dream Eater can just demolish anything. Confuse Ray is just kind of there to save you a few points of PP. Maybe finish off a last second little bit of damage on a Pokemon. But overall, this one was not bad and I don't have much more to say about it. I barely get through, but we do it. Next to last is Lance and thank the Lord that this one isn't bad as well. Gyarados is an excellent transform candidate and its move pool allows you just to breeze through the fight. And if you're cautious like me, you can also use Leer and then use the Hyper Beam and you can just mow things down easy. I'm not sure if I've ever even used Hyper Beam in my run since it's a rare level up move and I'm always racing the clock. I don't have time to do things like the game corner. But in generation one, it's worth saying that there's no recharge if you one hit KO a Pokemon and that's what you can pretty much do to his first three Pokemon fairly easy. You also have Hydro Pump for the Aerodactyl, but you will take one move in response. Overall, the only real pitfall in this fight is the Dragonite. It can do some really heavy damage and it forces a few retries and even though I didn't play it perfect here, the AI just uses agility and barrier way too much and it just makes this attempt easy. We're done. But let's move on to the last challenge of the run. The champion fight is all that stands in the way of us and ending this eternal nightmare. This one isn't a one shot and I do have to fish for some crits again, but let's just jump straight into the successful attempt. Is there any objections? No? Let's move on. First up is Pidgeot, and this one is pretty much the same. We've already kind of seen this. The moveset is slightly better this time, but overall, this one can be a little bit of a slog, but I just crit here, and we move along a little bit faster, but it really wasn't needed. Alakazam is next, and this is the first time where you actually need a crit, and that's why it took me several tries to get through this one. Reflect is just pretty much a run ender, and recover can be annoying. Uh, Alakazam is also crit happy, and it can just destroy you if it decides to, but it is what it is. Luck strikes again for Ditto. We're moving on. Rhyhorn is next, and I actually had to cut a lot of this fight out because it was just so long. There's a lot of annoying posturing, and originally I, st I tried to mirror move Horn Drill, and I hoped I could just get that one hit KO real quick, but in this attempt, I mirror move Tail Whip a lot, and eventually all those debuffs combined with a massive sky attack just kind of takes it out. Uh, it does a pretty surprising amount of damage, honestly. Arcanine is up, and this is where I need to get rid of all of my whirlwind power points. At that point, all I have left is sky attack, but I do miss the first one. That's unfortunate. I get some luck here. It just uses roar a pretty good bit, and a few embers do get me to have health, but the second sky attack can one-shot it since I have all of these badge boosts from all the tail whips and leers earlier, and it's a done deal. Executor is up next, and it's weak to sky attack. I guess if I took a hypnosis or some stomps with my lowered defense, it might have been a reset, but it just misses hypnosis, and then I just one-shot it with the sky attack, and that's all there is to see here. Blastoise is up last. It has Blizzard. I'm down to one single use of sky attack, and I need two turns. My only win condition here is for me to get that 30% chance for Blizzard to miss, and it does, and I have so many badge boosts at this point that sky attack and the collective eternal screams of wanting to end this run makes it an easy one-shot. And my goodness, guys, I've done it. Ditto is over. I can finally sleep well after after this grueling experience over the last week and I don't have anything positive to say about this run and I don't want to be overly negative but first you guys just have to understand let's just let's take a look at the time ditto was a massive level 100 which has never been done before on the channel but more importantly we finished with a time of 22 hours and 39 minutes just soak that in I don't need to tell you guys how awful this is and if you're new to the channel my fastest run was two hours and about 20 minutes 
That was Mew 2 a little bit ago. And the overall average of my runs, I would say, are probably about five hours, five and a half hours. But overall, I hated every single second of Ditto. It started off as a very tedious grind, and at no point in the entire run did it get any easier. It actually kept incrementally increasing as the battles got harder, and that's impressive. I've never seen that in any run. It culminated in the final stretch where I had to do two of the worst fights in the entire game, and that's Giovanni and Lorelai and those two fights alone combined for about 200 attempts it was really bad the fact that some battles just came down to straight up having a perfect fight and getting really lucky with no input of my own personal skill or planning it just felt really bad and it honestly just kind of went against everything that I like about doing solo runs I wouldn't recommend this to anyone and after Zubat last week and then doing Ditto this week it just it honestly made me question if I even want to do solo runs as a hobby for for a while. I'm not going to quit or anything like that, but I do think I'm done doing these incredibly long, tedious, awful runs for now. Remember, I, I just, I make peanuts on these. I get 300 views if I'm lucky, and I just do this for fun during my free time. And runs like this really break my spirit for videos, and they offer nothing to the tier list that I'm trying to build. I think I'll just do some easy ones for a bit, or maybe I'll just go sit and sob in my corner of my room for a few weeks. I don't know. Either way, that's it for me. Bye.